you know, why would they buy a property that's not going to, it's already kind of peaked at their return. They're not going to get a value add from it. They're going to get lower returns, but I know what my answer is. Tell, tell me why you think they would be interested in buying those at a lower cap rate. With these properties here, you know, we definitely <coughs> purposely purchase communities in the call it 10 to 60, $70 million range. That's underneath what the Blackstones and the REITs are buying just because, you know, they've got to write, you know, $150 million checks to move the needle for them. Um, and, you know, so, and again, so we're competing against less healed people, if you will, you know, they're not well as put together as our organization. And then once we go to sell the property though, two things, either one, there's folks that are looking for a quality stabilized property. That's got still kind of core plus, meaning they can still drive rents by making small improvements. And then in some communities, like one that we're selling, uh, green village coming up. Uh, you know, it's got, uh, it's got additional units still to be able to be renovated. And so again, so it adds a component to it that gives the buyer an ability to continue to drive performance, but also make some renovations and some kind of meat on the bone. So, you know, we also take that into account, um, when we, uh, you know, execute the plan. Right. So like even on this Tampa deal that we're doing and we just got under contract, that's part of the thing. It's a B class property. We'll execute the renovation, do the thing that will still, you know, leave a handful of units that are going to be needed to be updated. And but at the same time, there's plenty of people, high net worth individuals that would be looking for a good return, a good place to put their money. And it's going to average out a higher yield. Um, because there's still a little bit of room to adjust by making those small improvements. Yeah. So, so there is still some value add there. I'm, my, my idea was there's a, a return on effort. So when yeah. you get it where it's almost already stabilized. Oh, for sure. Then, uh, there's not as much effort involved in getting the, that return. A hundred percent. And that's spot on, bro. Because look, what we do. I mean, I got people that are like drunk on idiocy at times and they're thinking, you know, um, it's hard, right? Like, you know, you got 250 units, you got 30 down units, you got, you know, some tenants that from the takeover that are not the most ideal that you have to work through and, 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 and replace, so to speak. And, you know, we've got our asset management team working with the property manager, the regional manager. You've got those tenants that sometimes aren't happy about the new sheriff in town and the new rules that we implement. You've got the construction vendors that are coming in to do the work. And like, there's a lot of pieces. I mean, like, you know, I'm meeting with my team every week on these. They're meeting with it on a uh, weekly and, and, and you know, multi-day basis. It's not like you just buy it and, they, whoa, hey, man, we're making money. It's like there's real work going on between here and there to make that result happen. So no doubt there's plenty of guys they don't have the teams, the systems, or maybe even the desire to do what we're doing. And that's exactly what you just said. They'll buy it where it's nice and stabilized. You know, you maybe you fix up the kitchen with a little backsplash or something like that and bump the rent 20 bucks. And, you know, that's their thing because now it's running stable and good. And, you know, that's, that's a quality investment for them. That's not typically our model, but that's, you know, a lot of guys model.